Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit guide your understanding, open your understanding, and enlighten your thoughts for you to know what is His good and acceptable will for your life. And did you know? If you didn't know, you know now. What is the good and acceptable will for our lives? We don't know, right? For example, when I was a teenager, I didn't know if I wanted to be an engineer, if I wanted to be a doctor or a solicitor. I didn't know. I was in doubt. I was in a great... I had a great up and down because I didn't know what I wanted. And God, it's so wonderful, it's so glorious. God, in His Word, instructed and inspired, said like this, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, when we remember God, when we apply ourselves to do the will of God for our lives, we have strength. We don't see problems ahead of us. We only see opportunities. And we would like you to know the following. When a person, when a young person, or whoever, but especially... A, a, a youth, because they are in, in, in all that strength and vigor. So when a youth dedicates themselves to remember their Creator, to have in mind that He exists and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him, He is the blesser of those who seek Him, then this young person will become a giant in faith. Why? Because when you know, when you find out the will of God for your life, which is what happened to me, when I found out, when I had my personal experience with God and I received the seal of the Holy Spirit, in that day, a new horizon was opened to me. My understanding was opened. So I already knew what God wanted from me. And I didn't want to do anything else in life except to fulfill His will in my life. So I can speak about this because I experienced it. I had this experience myself. When we have a revelation of the will of God in our lives, for our lives, then this revelation, obviously, it is, it is the will of God. It's, it's, it involves the will of God. So, when I found out what God's will for my life was, it was a revelation. It is a revelation. And from that moment on, I didn't want to do anything else. That's what I wanted to say. I just wanted to preach the gospel to people. That's all. I just wanted to give to people what God had given me. And that's what I still want up until today. I don't ask God to have a long life. I don't ask God to give me more and more of the things of this world. No. I only ask God of one thing, always, always, always. Lord, teach me to do your will. Teach me, guide me. I want to give, but I want to know, I need to know how I can do it. So, this is a revelation. When God reveals His will, it's a revelation that we will depend on us whether obeying that will or not. If we obey, we will break through. But if we don't obey, we will suffer. 
So Solomon said here in Ecclesiastes, remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, which means that before we grow old, we have to apply in our own lives the will of God, the revelation of God's will. This is what it is to remember God. So, you know that there is a time in life, he's saying here, in a very clear way. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth. While you are strong, you have vigor before the difficult days come. Because the difficult days will always come to everyone, good and evil, righteous or wicked, holy or sinners, it doesn't matter. The evil days come to everyone. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, which means there is a time in life and a person grows old, that they don't have pleasure in anything anymore. What will they have pleasure in? The body is already dried up, dried up like an old prune. And then he says more. He says like this, while the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, you see, it. old age, when the person grows old, their body begins to bend over. So he says, when the grinders seize the teeth, right? When the person gets old, their teeth, they start losing their teeth as well. Everything falls off because they are few. And those that look through the windows grow dim, which means that their eyesight grows dim and they can't see properly anymore. Every human being go through this if they get to grow old if they get to an advanced age. If they don't, then they don't. So, but anyway, the advice is given here. And then what draws the attention here, afterwards when he speaks of old age, he says as well, also they are afraid of height, which means they are afraid of height, any sort of height, going up a staircase, an old person is scared. When there is terror in the way, when the almond tree blossoms, the almond tree blossoms, what does it mean? I don't know. The grasshopper is a burden. Look, a grasshopper is a small insect. But then it is a burden. The person is so old, so old, so advanced in days that a grasshopper is heavy and desire fails. Uh, and when the appetite doesn't come anymore, what are they going to live for? That's the question. What are they going to live for? To tell everybody, look, I got to 100 years, I got to 110, 120 years. What's the point of that? The eyes can't see properly anymore. They can't hear properly anymore. They can't even smell things properly any longer. There's no more teeth to chew the food. So, man, we will decay. Human beings will decay. And then he says, Remember your Creator before the silver cord is loosed. A silver cord is a symbol of life, before life is over, before the silver cord, which is life, is loosed. 
and the golden bowl is broken. It's difficult to break a golden bowl, but it breaks eventually. Or the pitcher shattered at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the well. All of these, you know, in old age, everything deteriorates and disappears. Then he says something that it's the, the subject of our message during this week. Then the dust, then the dust comes when the old person dies and they become dust. Dust. All of the physical body, all their youth and appearance and beauty and vigor, when they grow old, there is no value anymore. Zero. Then finally the person dies and the dust, which is the body, the human body, dust will return to the earth as it was. We are dust. We were made out of the dust of the earth. So man returns to dust where it was. And the spirit, he speaks of the spirit now, the Spirit will return to God who gave it. Then he says nothing anymore. He doesn't speak of the soul. He speaks of the body and of the Spirit. The body goes back to dust and the Spirit goes to God. So you will understand this week what it means, the difference between soul and spirit. The body you already know because you already invest on it. You know what the body is. But the soul and the spirit are two different things, completely different. When it says that the spirit will return to God who gave it, it's the intelligence, it's the reasoning, it's the conscience, the person, the, the mind, the intelligence, which God lent to them while they were on earth, whether they are believers or atheists or unbelievers or Christians, Muslims, whatever. Every human being receives talents. Sometimes the person didn't study, but they are very intelligent. They're very intelligent. And when we speak of intelligence, I remember my grandpa, I mean, I didn't know him, but it's what they say, that my grandfather was a Portuguese man who was very, very intelligent, and he didn't have any studies, he didn't have instruction, but he was a hard-working man, very honest, very correct, a very wise man. And when he went to sell a horse that he had, he wanted to sell the horse. So a buyer came to check the horse. And the buyer saw the horse, looked around, lifted the tail of the horse to see if it had any illness. He examined the entire horse. And then the buyer said, but Mr. So-and-so, tell me, there is no problem at all with your horse. And he said, look, this horse's problem is right on its face. So the buyer looked up, opened the mouth of the horse to check its teeth and saw that the teeth were healthy. And he said, well, the horse is really good. It's young. And the man bought the horse and went home. Then two days later, he came back with the horse and said, Mr. Look, I have here your horse. You never told me that the horse was blind. And then he was like, no, I told you. I didn't say he was blind, but I said that his problem was right on his face. And you didn't see that he was blind. But what can I do? I was honest with you. I said the flaw, the problem is right on its face. I'm sorry. And then it was too late. But he was a very wise man, very shrewd. He didn't know how to read or write, but he knew how to do business. So the intelligence, the capacity, the reasoning, talents of each person is the spirit. 
is the spirit. So the person may not have a degree, but they they may even be illiterate. But you can be sure that there is wisdom there. You can be sure of that. And that's exactly what the spirit is. This intelligence that God lends to every human being, you know, those men who created the airplane, the rockets that go to the moon, the scientists, all of these, God lends His wisdom to human beings, which is the Spirit. He lends it. And when man goes back to dust, then this wisdom goes back to God. It's what is written here. The Spirit will return to God who gave it. The dust goes back to the earth. The Spirit returns to God. And the soul. That's the question. He doesn't speak about the soul here. The soul, my dear friend, this one, the one who decides its destination, it's each of us. Tomorrow we are going to talk about this. It's going to be worth you reading this again. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. You are going to find out many marvelous things there. Okay? We are going to be back here tomorrow. And the following week, we are going to be having a campaign to rescue the soul. If by any chance your soul is wounded, frustrated, depressed, bankrupt, then this coming week, we are going to have the campaign of prayer and intercession and salvation of the soul in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God all over the world. We are going to be in the same spirit of saving souls. May God bless you all and until then, in the name of Jesus. Amen.